Hey guys and welcome to Monique. In this tutorial what I'm going to do is explain all the basics, all the fundamentals of how this thing works, starting with the oscillators and the filters, which is where most of the action happens. Now let's familiarize ourselves with what's going on here. On the left hand side we have the oscillators, three oscillators, oscillator one, two and three, and then three rows of filters. Filter one, filter two and of course filter three. First of all to keep things simple I'm just going to focus in on one filter. Have a look at all the modulation, have a look at all the settings and then expand that to filter two and three with all the routing options. So there are three inputs to filter one. Input one determines how much of oscillator one goes into it. You can see there's a bit of a clue down here, O1. Input two determines how much of oscillator two goes into filter one. So you see again, it says O2 down here for oscillator two, giving you another clue that it's oscillator two now that's going into filter one. And of course, input three determines how much of oscillator three goes into this particular filter. At the moment, because filter one is at 100% and the other inputs are at zero, it's purely oscillator one going into this particular filter, filter one. Nice and simple. And you can change the type of wave in each oscillator with the wave selector on the left hand side. It's really cool. So you can move between all the different wave types between say a sine and a square and a saw all the way through to noise. And all the points in between. And as a cool little bonus trick, what you can do is scroll the mouse wheel to precisely select one of the four main types, sine, square, saw, or noise. I'll leave it as saw for the time being. And then what I could also do is introduce some of oscillator two. So I could turn up the input two here. So I'm now introducing oscillator two into filter one. But what you could do is use the tune to change the frequency or more specifically the pitch of oscillator two relative to oscillator one, so. And I think I'll change it to be a saw as well. And again, you can get precise values by scrolling the mouse wheel. So I'll set it as a nice musical interval, seven semitones. Actually, I think this will sound better with a simple sine wave. So I'll just change the wave type back to sine, maybe with a few extra harmonics, just moving it closer to a square. Great stuff. Next, let's look at the filter configuration. This is where we can choose what type of filter that filter is basically configured to. So at the moment it is on LP for low pass, or in other words, letting the low frequencies pass through. With a cutoff parameter, just like you'd expect from a filter. HP for high pass or letting the high frequencies pass through. and BP for band pass, just letting the middle frequencies through. Around the cutoff position. And naturally you also get a resonance control which boosts the frequencies around this cutoff position. which becomes especially noticeable when you sweep this cutoff parameter. But here's where things start to get interesting. What you can do is modulate parameters in this filter. And to be more specific, most of the time you end up modulating the cutoff position of a filter. So you want to effectively 
have that movement of the cutoff position automated as you trigger a note. And it's this section here that controls the modulation for this particular filter. The modulation is a combination of an envelope on the left hand side and an LFO on the right hand side. And you can mix between these two, these two components of the modulation with the mod mix. At the moment, because the mod mix is on the left hand side, it's all the way to the left, then it's only the envelope that's doing the modulation. If you move the mod mix all the way to the right, then it's only the LFO or the low frequency oscillator that's doing the modulation. So right now it's all the way on the right, so it's purely the LFO doing the modulation. The next step is to actually tell the filter what you want to modulate with this modulator. And you do that with these buttons above the controls. So mod X, just up here, because I want to modulate the cutoff position, this is the button I want to press. And now, You can hear that that cutoff position on that filter is being modulated, it's being changed according to this rate here in the LFO, which you can define to be an interval of the BPM in your track. And what I find quite useful is to see this modulation actually happening. So if you hit the top right button to see the oscilloscope and make sure filter one modulation is selected down here. So you might have to turn off another one Make sure F1 filter one modulation is selected. Then you can see that modulation happening below in real time. If I say slow down the rate, you can see it go slower. And there's one more control to be aware of when doing this modulation, and that is the modulation power, or I suppose another way of looking at this, it's the modulation amount. To see that, you have to use what we call the backslider of the parameter you're modulating. So we're modulating this parameter here, the cutoff. To see the back of it, we say this is the front currently. To see the backslider, you can either click the button, and you can see now the backslider and a percentage. So I can make the modulation more powerful. You can either see this backslider by clicking that button or a nice little shortcut if you hold shift on the keyboard, then you can see all the backsliders at the same time. So that's the LFOs. Let's now take a look at the envelopes, which are a key part of pretty much any sound in synthesis. We need to first of all change the mod mix so that we are only using the envelope component of the modulation. So I'll move the mod mix all the way to the left hand side. We've already told the filter to modulate the cutoff because the button up here is still selected. So it's now just a case of dialing in the ADSR settings or the attack decay sustain release settings of this envelope to do what we want to do. To help with things, what I'll do is bring back the visual feedback by clicking the oscilloscope button in the top right. Make sure it's still on filter one modulation readout. And you can see what the filter is doing. Now, what I want to do is create a nice plucky sort of sound. So I'm going to increase the decay from zero to maybe, I don't know, 200 milliseconds or so. Should be about right. I'll bring the sustain all the way down to zero. Maybe some attack, let's leave it initially. And yes, that's starting to do what I want to do but I'm just going to tweak the initial cutoff position so it rests at a lower frequency or all the way back down to zero. That's sounding pretty good. Maybe with a little bit of attack.
And just for fun, let's introduce some of the LFO too. So we're combining the envelope and the LFO into one modulation. So I'll move the mod mix. Maybe increase the rate to a nice quarter. Do you see and also hear how it's now a combination of the envelope and the LFO? It's really cool. This is how some of the most interesting sounds come about by combining envelopes and LFOs so that the whole sound is interesting, not just the beginning bit, but the middle section too. And you know what, just for fun, let's take it one step further. Let's introduce some filter effects, but also have this main modulation for this filter modulate the amount of that effect. And it's nice and simple. All you need to do is tell that particular filter, filter one, what effect you want to modulate. And you do that by clicking the button above that control. So I'm going to use some distortion. By clicking the button, I've told the filter I want to modulate that distortion amount with the main modulation. Maybe crank up the amount too, so, or the power. Some lovely extra harmonics brought out by that distortion. It's a nice effect. Great stuff. And that is how you configure and modulate a filter. Next, let's look at how we can use filters two and three and how the audio runs from the oscillators through the filters to go where we want it to go. So we know how things start off with filter one. We have three inputs and each of these inputs determine for each oscillator how much of that oscillator goes into filter one. So that one determines how much of oscillator one goes into filter one. The next control along input two for filter one determines how much of oscillator two goes into filter one. And similarly for oscillator three into input three, at the end of the first filter, there is an output control. So this output control on the right hand side determines how much of the output of filter one goes out to the master or not technically to the master, but the next big section in Monique, which is the amp envelope. You can see a bit of the audio flow as a clue in the background. So it goes from the filters into the amp envelope, right into the effects and so on. And here is how filters two and three works. Let's look at filter two first of all. For filter two, there are three inputs, input one, input two, and input three. If you take a look at input one, so we're on filter two, input one, if you crank the slider to the left, that's introducing some of oscillator one because we're in input one, it's introducing some of oscillator one directly into filter two. So as I move this control to the left, it's introducing some of oscillator one directly into filter two, completely ignoring filter one. However, if I move it to the right, so still on input one, if I move it to the right, what it's doing is it's still taking oscillator one, but going through filter one first. So it's taking purely oscillator one through filter one, then into this input for filter two. But here's the really important bit. It's not taking the overall output from filter one, which includes a bit of oscillator one, a bit of oscillator two. It's only taking the component from filter one that corresponds to oscillator one. Let me give you an example. So if I turn down the output of filter one, we're hearing oscillator one going through filter one into filter two and then out to the output, but we're not hearing any of oscillator two. Oscillator two is going into filter one through this input here, but then none of filter one is going out to the output. So we shouldn't hear any of oscillator two at all. Do you hear how it's only one particular note? It's only oscillator one. Whereas if I root oscillator two through it as well, all of a sudden you can hear the chord. So right now there is both oscillator one and oscillator two going through filter one into filter two and then out to the output. 
So let's look at one final specific example. For example, if you take a look at input two for filter three and you move it to the left, then it's going to take oscillator two directly into filter three. It says O2 down here. Whereas if you move it to the right, it's going to take oscillator two from filter two. And that is the big idea behind audio routing through the filters in Monique. So let's initialize the preset just with a knit up here that resets it back to factory default. And we can look at the next two stages of Monique, the amp envelope and the EQ and effects section. So the amp envelope or amplitude envelope, it's a nice simple envelope on the overall gain or the overall amplitude of your sound. Let's get some visual feedback so we can more easily see what's going on with our sound. To do that, just like before, we open up the oscilloscope with the button in the top right. And this time, make sure the amp envelope output is triggered. And you can see what's happening to the overall sound with this nice visual feedback. The controls are standard ADSR controls, attack to determine how quickly the envelope takes to come in. A bit of decay, the amount of time it takes to reach the sustain level. Pull down the sustain level. You can see the attack coming in, the decay happening to the sustain. And maybe a little bit of release too. In fact, if we change in the zoom level for this oscilloscope, you can get a whole new perspective on what's happening with this amp envelope. This in particular can help best demonstrate the slope control See how it changes the curviness? So you can precisely control how your envelope behaves. It's really cool. And finally, we have the EQ and effects section, the EQ and the effects. And these work exactly how you expect. One thing to take note of though, is that the EQ needs to be mixed in with the mix control. And it's a nice simple seven band EQ for each of the different bands, for each of the different nodes, you can either increase the gain by moving the control to the right or decrease the gain by moving it to the left. Nice and simple. And similarly, the effects work in a simple way too. If you want, say, some distortion, you simply have to turn up the distortion parameter. Or chorus. Delay feedback. and so on. In other tutorials, we're going to deep dive into some of these features, so be sure to follow us on YouTube to make sure you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.